Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment we've all been waiting for, I know. Finally gonna be talking about uh, towing a travel trailer with a Jeep Gladiator. No, this is nothing new, and I'm sure there's probably some other videos on doing just that, but I don't think I've seen one yet. Um, that being said, I'm just going to relay our experience with towing a travel trailer with a Jeep Gladiator. Try and keep this somewhat short and to the point. Uh, travel trailer is a 21RB from uh, Heartland. Uh, dry weight is, I want to say like 5,050 pounds. Add whatever accoutrements that they add to the trailer before you pick it up. And uh, I don't know, we'll call it 5,100 somewhere in there. The Jeep itself is a max tow, um, pretty basic. Didn't need the Rubicon, wanted the extra capacity of the max tow. Get kind of the best of both worlds. We're not wheeling in this thing, especially since it's not ours. Um, but yeah, max tow, 410 gears. We did change out the tires and wheels. Um, Approximately 33 inches tall, 295s. They are E's, which in my opinion, opinion is not ideal, even though it may help for towing for a little extra security, but E's are extremely heavy, especially when unnecessary. So uh, just kind of going over the truck, the uh, max payload or the max uh, gross weight of the truck itself is 6250. And we've added some things. So you got the tires and wheels. You got the steps. And we got a front bumper that is probably 70 pounds heavier than the stalker, if I remember right. So I would say between the tires, tires call it 80 pounds heavier than stock, 70 pounds heavier than stock for the front bumper. I would say about 70 pounds for the steps. That all cuts into your payload, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, really quickly, the uh, front has an inch and a half spacer kit uh, lift, and the rear has three quarter inch spacer. Wanted to keep somewhat of a stock type ride, but um, fit these tires a little bit more easily without looking like they're forced on there. I did put on Fox Rubicon shocks. They're takeoffs off of eBay. They're really, really soft. I kind of like the floaty ride uh, over the stock shocks on the sports. Um, so I think that is worth it. One other thing that I wanted to touch on is the brake controller. I think everybody kind of assumed that this would, uh, well, I like a lot of people assumed this would have a factory brake controller in it and uh, we're halfway through 2020 and there still is no factory brake controller, although there's rumors of it being available for pre-order. Got tired of waiting. Ended up putting in a uh, trusty Prodigy P3, which I think is one of the best brake controllers on earth. If you all haven't seen my other video, that's where I ended up sticking it. Works 100% flawlessly. So I guess I'll cut right to the chase on weights. We did get a chance to scale this. Now I did not get a uh, individual weight on the Jeep itself, which I'm kind of bummed out about, but it just wasn't convenient. Um, scaling the truck by itself with the trailer hooked up, we had uh, 6,150 pounds. Uh, gross weight of the truck is 62.50, so call it 100 pounds. We were at a quarter tank of fuel, three people on board, and one dog. Uh, to be fair, the truck bed was loaded down full of stuff. Um, grill, cooler, uh, five gallons of fuel, um, table, there was a few other things back there. Uh, moral of the story, that stuff could have been moved if need be from the truck bed into the trailer. 
the gross weight on the trailer is, I believe, 7,400, no, 7,430 pounds. Uh, the trailer by itself, axles on the scale, was only 5,600 pounds. So if you add those two together, you come up with a grand total of 11,750. Our grand total is 11750 The gross combined on a max tow Gladiator is 12,800 pounds. So we do have a little bit of wiggle room there, 1,000 pound-ish, uh, but that doesn't leave much more room for uh, getting any trailers that are much bigger than this. I'm not a Facebooker, uh, my wife is, and I think she's been on the Gladiator page for quite a while now. And I guess it's routine, routinely asked, can I tow this with my Jeep Gladiator? Uh, all different kinds of trailers that she sees posted on there and the general consensus is for most of the stuff she sees, the answer is no. You're not gonna tow a 9,000 pound 30 foot travel trailer with a Jeep Gladiator unless you're crazy. I don't have the hitch installed right now but I will post a picture of it. Uh, we're using the equalizer four point uh, it's one of the most simple awesome hitches on earth the weight distribution is great and the anti-sway properties of that hitch are absolutely amazing so I will say that with our combination and the approximate uh, we'll call it 650 to 700 pounds of tongue weight is what I'm guesstimating uh, we have six washers in the tilt for the head of the equalizer hitch and that puts enough preload on the bars to keep the Jeep close to unloaded uh, dimensions on the fenders to the ground. And, you know, definitely not picking the rear axle up. There's not too much preload there. I will say that having as much preload as you can get without jacking the back of the truck up helps with the bounce of the soft rear suspension. We first started with four washers in the hitch head and it rode okay, but the rear suspension had a lot of bounce in it. And the only way you would fix that if you were gonna leave it at four washers on the hitch head would be to put an adjustable shock on the back to control that uh, compression and rebound. Neighbor has their lawnmower going. I tell you what, if it's not a weed whacker, it's a leaf blower. If it's not a leaf blower, it's a lawnmower. If it's not a lawnmower, it's an airplane. The world sure is noisy sometimes. So I think I'm gonna go over a couple of pros and cons. Um, well, first let me state the, uh, the driving feel uh, of pulling this trailer, which is, we'll call it 6,000 pound trailer. It is extremely comfortable going down the road. There's nothing sketchy about it. There's no pronounced sway. Um, it rides really good for the weight. Uh, you don't, you do not have to hold onto the steering wheel with a death grip and nor would I ever tow anything like that and nor should anybody ever have to deal with anything like that. And yes, I have seen people show up at a campground or wherever they're going with a trailer and they were scared to death of what they were telling. Do your homework. Um, find somebody knowledgeable to help you set your stuff up. And you will be a lot happier in the long run. This combination tows extremely well and very safe. And stops on a dime. To add along uh, to the driving feel, uh, all the other truck and trailer combinations that we've had before this one, my wife has never driven it before. She's never towed anything before in her life. And uh, we just got back from a 1,200 mile trip. And 
I would say the wife drove this trip 500 miles out of those 1,200 miles, maybe even half. And uh, she was completely comfortable doing it. Of course, a little bit nervous. Anybody would be. Um, but she did it, and she did a fantastic job. I'll try and show a clip uh, of that happening. But this combo tows so well that even Mrs. Black can drive it down the freeway. This is her first trip ever of doing stints uh, out on the highway with the trailer on. So very proud of her for that. The transmission, eight speed automatic. Uh, while it does hunt around quite a bit, especially in any kind of hills, it's very hilly around here in the Pacific Northwest. Whether it's uh, Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, you name it. All the way, Wyoming, Utah, all that stuff. There's hills everywhere. So your transmission is constantly shifting up and down from about 4th uh, to 7th, we'll call it. The engine performance, there is plenty of power. Uh, I will say this thing likes to rev out. I don't think that this engine may have been the best choice for a Gladiator, uh, especially for something called Max Tow. Uh, the little Pentastar V6, uh, I wish it well. Um, hopefully it survives. The uh, I won't, I'm not going to call it torture, but it is obnoxious because the thing likes to rev out so much. When you're going over a mountain pass at 50-60 miles an hour, you know, it's it's going to be running 4,500 RPMs. And uh, while it shouldn't, in theory, hurt anything, it's obnoxious to listen to. I would say of the 1,200 miles of this journey, that 30% um, of those 1,200 miles were probably in the 4,000 to 4,500 RPM range. And then uh, another... 40% of the 1,200 miles were in the 3,500 RPM range. And then a little bit of it was probably in the 2,800 RPM range. But you get the idea. Hills and loads definitely makes that engine work. There's plenty of power. I mean, the thing will probably go 80 miles an hour if you wanted it to. Uh, but you just have to listen to that engine screaming. Of course, if I had my druthers, um, I would skip the diesel and go straight to a Hemi. I think the Hemi would do a better job in the Gladiator doing everything that we've just talked about. It would probably even get better fuel mileage while towing. Uh, fuel economy. So what did we say? 11,750 pounds. Mountain passes, headwinds, you name it. Uh, this 1,200 mile trip, I would say that we averaged about maybe nine miles to the gallon. It's probably closer to 8.8. .8. No, I didn't hand calculate it, and no, I didn't uh, map out every fuel load and, and range and all those good things because, well, it just takes away from the whole experience of being on vacation. But I will give you a rough guesstimation of about 8.8 .8 to 9 miles to the gallon, over 1,200 miles in the Pacific Northwest. I'm sure there's something that I'm forgetting to tell you guys that I wanted to say. Um, if it comes up to me later, I'll uh, maybe add my own comments to the comments section. If you guys have any questions or concerns about this rig, uh, feel free to post them up and I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, I'm going to post up some video of uh, driving the thing and uh, you know inside outside from the dashboard uh, outside of the Jeep uh, climbing some mountain passes cruising down the freeway uh, so if you're really bored check it out if not I don't really care uh, most of my videos I don't care what anybody does with them uh, try and put out a decent amount of information but uh, just kind of do this stuff for fun
we're just at the beginning of White Pass, out of uh, coming out of Packwood, and we haven't hit the steep part yet in the old Gladiator. But I'm trying to hold this camera where you can see the dashboard and the outside the windshield at the same time. So that's the first little hill. Not even the pass yet. But so far the Jeep is doing just fine. Has plenty of power. The screaming engine does get a little bit annoying every once in a while, but there's nothing you can do about that. So far we've had no problems going the speed limit. We're actually going a little bit above the speed limit right now. There's actually another Jeep behind us that's going to be probably excited to get around us. The White Pass going up the steep parts is uh, two lanes same direction so that helps a lot. So we're, I don't know, somewhere's around uh, 100 miles into this deal maybe, if that. And uh, you can see our average miles per gallon. That's if you can trust the computer. So I'm just trying to kind of let some of these people buy now. Alright, 50 miles an hour in here. This corner kind of sucks because it takes all your momentum away right where you need it most. If any of you are familiar with White Pass, heading eastbound, you'll, you'll know this hill. I would guess I'm not even at half throttle. So our old truck and trailer coming up this hill is a six liter power stroke with a 13,000 pound trailer. You had to drive it for all it's worth, but you couldn't floor it. But you definitely wanted to keep your momentum up. This combination is much more manageable. So I'm actually backing out of the throttle again.
So we made it over the top of White Pass. Did you see big cliffs? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how high we are right now, but that's way down there. That's way down there. So now we're going to drive and coast down the... Coast down the what would be the east side of White Pass on Highway 12. This hitch is working absolutely fantastic. Isaac and I did run that hitch up to six washers on the tilt. Preloads this thing quite a bit more or a lot level. Tape measurements are nice and uh, having those bars preloaded a bit more helps with the uh, bounce and the rear suspension with the tongue weight. Hi, Dexter. Try not to get squished. of drafting and how it affects towing an RV and uh, some people don't like doing it some people do like doing it our Jeep has uh, adaptive cruise control on it so we just turn that guy on and let it pick its deal behind whatever trucks in front of us but the Jeep does not get very good gas mileage towing it's shaped like a brick, of course, and then we've got a huge wall behind us, so on this trip of 1,200 miles, we've had a, like a high of 10 miles to the gallon and a low of 8 miles to the gallon, and we've been kind of, well, call the average right in between there. But if you can stay behind a truck like this and you don't mind it, these roads are pretty clean, so it's not like we're getting sandblasted. Uh, you can gain a lot of range and a lot of uh, miles per gallon back if you just cruise. Uh, you can only go so fast in a Jeep Gladiator. It, it, it just doesn't have the aerodynamics or uh, the fuel efficiency to pull any faster than about 60 to 65. There's, a, there's even a huge difference from 60 to 65. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, uh, why a Jeep Gladiator? And that is a good question. So the big thing, uh, we've had a uh, couple different uh, diesels, um, another gas F-150. Um, the realistic reason is why a Jeep Gladiator is, uh, well, none of us wants to drive a full-size truck around here as a daily driver. I uh, just don't need it. Um, the last couple full tries, full, 
the last couple full-size trucks that we had honestly they just spent uh most of their years sitting in the backyard only being used as a tow truck and that's fine for some people that want to have that kind of money tied up into a rig that's just sitting there but we wanted something that would be a little bit more uh you know daily user but still be able to tow this trailer around on occasional trips between this uh the ford ranger uh chevy colorado and not even really the tacoma because the tacoma doesn't have a high enough tow rating um, i would say our second choice probably would have been the ranger i'm kind of regretting not trying the ranger um, i like the concept of the ranger i like the concept of the ecoboost and yes i have driven them before and the ecoboost drives much like a diesel does so if you don't like high revving stuff and, and whining engines that are screaming all the time, that might have been a better option. But um, overall, we went with the Gladiator because it had a good tow rating for what we were wanting to do with it. It uh, rides pretty good as a daily driver, and it does what we do uh, use it for. Um, these vehicles are uh, mainly used for my wife's business, so... Me getting to drive it on occasion is just a perk of that operation. So to be all completely fair, your towing experience might well be a whole lot better and a whole lot nicer with a uh, bigger truck with a more powerful engine. Uh, you know, if I had to pick to have a vehicle just laying around in the backyard, it probably would be an EcoBoost F-150. That being said, I would love to sample a Gladiator with a Hemi in it. Uh, we could possibly entertain checking out a Gladiator with the three liter, three liter uh, eco diesel in it. Um, but I would prefer to kind of stay away from diesels after owning two or three of them in a row. So yeah, we kind of just chose the uh, Jeep Gladiator as a uh, fun all around vehicle that could tow this trailer on occasion, but that's not its primary duty by any means. It does do it extremely well and very safely.